Hello everyone. Welcome back. Today we are discussing Huck a back weave. Yes, you heard that right. Huck a back. Now this is a characteristic weave design which is highly absorbent, typically made using cotton fabrics and gives wonderful moisture absorbency. Now how is this weave constructed? Now you can see two blocks created right here. The first block is created on 10 by 10 and the second one is created on 8 by 8. However, you can also note that I have split it up into four parts. Now why have I split it up? What is the entire purpose? Now huckaback weaves are always constructed by dividing the repeat into four equal parts. So my repeat size is going to be 10 by 10 and I'm dividing it into four blocks of five by five each. Now two parts out of this is what is going to be made using plain weave which gives firmness to the fabric. The remaining two parts, diagonally opposite two parts, are going to be made using long floats which give moisture absorbency to the entire fabric. So we can start by alternately marking plain weave first and then we can go on to mark the long floats. So let's skip the first corner, move up towards the second corner. Now here I am going to first mark my plain weave as indicated earlier in the description. So I'm marking one up, one down, one up, one down and one up again. Now the second yarn is going to be starting with one down, one up, one down, one up and one down. Repeat the same to create, complete your entire block of five by five with plain weave. Do not worry about the plain weave not getting repeated or the repeat not being coming in com correctly as a typical plain weave would be. Repeat the same thing on the diagonally opposite corner. So this is the first block which we've left vacant for the long floats. Go on to the next. Repeat the plain weave as is where it is. So I'm starting again with one up, one down, one up, one down, ending with one up. Second yarn, one down, one up and complete the weave. The third yarn, same as the fifth. Fourth, the same as my second. And finish off with the fifth yarn, same like the first. So my two diagonally opposite parts with plain weave, which is going to give firmness to the weave, is done. Now, for the remaining two diagonally opposite quarters, the weave is going to look identical in both the quarters and here we are going to fill it in with the long floats. So here, I'm going to skip the first yarn and I'm move on to the second warp yarn and I complete the entire thing with a long float. Likewise, I skip one more yarn, I go to the fourth yarn and I mark a long float of five. So the second yarn and the fourth yarn has vertical floats which are really long. Now horizontally also I need to construct long floats. So I'm going to skip the first yarn and in the second yarn I'm going to fill in the spaces and create my long float. Likewise on the fourth yarn I'm going to create my long floats. Repeat the same thing here on the diagonally opposite corner. So skip the first yarn in the second yarn, create your long floats. Skip one yarn, go to the next, repeat the long float again. Horizontal floats or the floats in the weft direction, skip the lower yarn, go to the second in the corner and complete your long floats and repeat it on the fourth again. This is how your long floats are going to look once you weave them and this is what is going to give you your firmness with the plain weave. Now let's move on. 10 by 10 is a classic repeat size for Huckaback which is most commonly used in the industry. Moving on to the draft and then the peg plan. So for the draft, if we realize, we can divide the entire weave into two sections. So first five yarns and the last five yarns. 
Now the first five yarns, if we observe them carefully, the first, third and the fifth yarn are repeating in the same order. Whereas the second and the fourth yarn move in the same interlacement order. So keeping that in mind, my threading order in the harnesses is going to be first yarn, first harness. Second yarn goes to the second harness. Third yarn comes back to the first harness. Fourth goes to the second harness. And then fifth comes back to the first harness. So one, two, one, two, one. This is how it moves. Now let's look at the second group of five yarns. Now if we notice, this also follows the same pattern with the sixth, eighth and the tenth yarn having the same interlacement order while the uh, seventh and the ninth yarn following the same interlacement order. So here in the third and the fourth harness, we are going to mark or enter the sixth to 10th yarns. So here I start with the third harness, 6th, 4th harness, 7th yarn, 8th yarn in the third harness, 9th yarn in the fourth harness, and 10th yarn back again in the third harness. So it follows a zigzag order on both the parts. So it is also like a group draft where you're grouping the yarns into two sets the first five and the last five and you are threading them in the harnesses like so. Let's move ahead with the peg plan. Now the first yarn or the first harness if we look at the first third and the fifth warp yarn are present in the first harness and if we notice their interlacement order it is one down one up and it continues like so till the very end. So I'm going to mark just that in the peg plan as my lifting order. Now the second harness has the second and the fourth yarn. So if we notice the second and the fourth yarn, you have the long float of five yarns and then you start with one down, one up and you mark your plain weave. So let's do just that long float of five and then you have one down, one up, one down, one up and last end it with one down. Let's look at the third harness which has the 6th, 8th and the 10th yarn. So the interlacement order for the 6th, 8th and 10th yarn is plain weave only which starts with 1 up, ends with 1 down. Let's mark this. 1 up, 1 down and continue right up till the end. That's what it looks like. Let's look at the fourth harness which has the 7th and the 9th yarn which has the long float. Now it starts with 1 down, 1 up one down, one up, one down, which is the first five yarns, weft yarns, and then the last five is going to be a long float. So I start with one down, one up, continue to mark so, and the last five yarns are going to be a long float. This is what my draft and peg plan will look like for Huckaback. Similarly, I've constructed a block of 8 by 8 to show you how to construct Huckaback on a smaller grid of 8 by 8 yarns. Let's take a look. So here we've marked plain weave on two diagonally opposite quarters. I've purposely marked it here because some of you may have a question why marked on the second and the third quarter here. You can also mark it on the first and the third quarter as well. Let's complete the long floats on the either ends and complete the weave. So here we've completed the long floats. Complete the draft and the peg plan for the second example of 8 by 8 of Huckaback and share your views in the comments section below. See you for the next video. Thank you.